Hey everyone, it's Greg from Rev Robotics, and today I wanted to make a very specific video for you to help show you how to uh, get your robot configured and programmed uh, for the starter bot for this year's game. Um, as many of you know, we created the starter bot as a resource that teams can uh, use to jumpstart their season. And so as part of that, we also created the software that would help this machine run in competition. So if you're getting started with code, one of the easiest ways to do that is to upload the code that we've already written, learn about it, maybe try and experiment with it a little bit, and then maybe start to write some of your own code. So this video is about the process to get the code that we have already written onto the actual robot itself. There's quite a few steps involved, but uh, I think you'll, you'll see uh, as you go through it that um, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to be uh, ready to go. So for this, what you'll need is you'll need the um, control hub, um, and ideally it's the control hub already assembled onto the, the uh, starter bot um, with the battery, the ability to turn that on. You'll need your driver hub, and then you'll need a laptop. Um, the laptop will need access to the internet, at least to start, uh, but uh, as you'll go on, you won't, you won't need internet. Um, I'll also say there's a little bit of a different step here and some different options on whether you have an Apple computer or a Windows computer, but uh, generally speaking, the process here is very similar that I think you'll be able to kind of work through the differences between the two of those. So the first step here is to actually go to your computer with internet and go to our uh, starter bot for Freight Frenzy uh, site. This is the same site that you uh, had got all the step-by-step -step build guides on, on everything about how to program and do all that. So you'll notice down here in this block, we have this build guide PDF, which I have on another tab um, that I've downloaded. You'll notice we've got the step files if you're using CAD, um, or um, even some resources on if you click through on how to program. But here, down here at the bottom, you'll notice it says StarterBot Teleop Blocks Code and StarterBot OnBot Java Code. OnBot Java and Blocks are the two different major ways to program on the robot. You can also use another method, but this is what we're going to focus on for this video. So, um, and I'm going to specifically focus on the Blocks Code because I think that that's a really great place to start for teams and students who maybe don't have any programming experience at all. Um, what I want you to do is download this software. So you can save that, save it to somewhere that you know where it is. In this case, my desktop, I've actually already got it saved there. Um, so um, you can save that code. You will need that later. The next thing that you'll do is you'll click Next here on this StarterBot Programming in Teleop, and you'll see this table here called Configuration. Uh, with the Rev control system for, that's used in FTC, um, there's two steps to programming. Uh, step number one is configuration, which is all about building a software hardware map. So that is a configuration file that says, this type of motor is plugged into this port. This type of motor is plugged into this port. This sensor is in this port, and so on and so on. You should do that configuration before you actually write your software or update. Um, and for, to make this configuration file, it's really important that you name things properly because whatever you call something in your configuration file, that's what you're also going to call it in your code. So for example, if you call something left drive with a capital L and a capital D, left drive all one, when you go into your code, it's going to use that term left drive. If you make it left drive with a lowercase l and it's expecting an uppercase, things are not going to work. You can go through and fix all those things. Nothing is so rigid, but you really want to make sure that as you're doing this next step, you're following this chart very, very carefully and you're making sure to set it up correctly. If you don't do it that way, your code will throw errors because these two are kind of synchronized steps. So for this next step, what you need to do is to take the driver hub, and the first step that you'll do with the driver hub is connect it to your robot. So the control hub is powered on with the battery, um, and so you'll go into your, your Android settings, click Network, click Wi-Fi, and then you'll see here's my robot FTC16336. Um, the default password for all of our of our control hubs is password. 
Um, we recommend changing that before your competition, but in the classroom environment, it's really quite useful. Um, so do that. Um, your device will connect to, it says connected. Um, so now what I'm going to do is, now that it's connected, I'll launch the FTC driver station software. All right. So this, this will boot up um, like that. The green bar will show that you've got good battery and everything's connected. Um, but if you notice, you click these arrows to select your teleop, and there's no there. So that shows that there's no code on your robot. So what you'll do is you'll click up here in the three dots, and you'll click Configure Robot. And you'll see no configurations found if you haven't done this before. Um, so what you'll do is click New. Um, and you'll notice this. there's some things in the portal. As you get more devices connected to your robot, more things will show up here. But for this basic robot, so you click into the Control Hub portal, click the Control Hub itself, and now you'll see a list here of motor, servos, digital, different connections. These are the types of connections that you would need. But So for this robot, we have four motors and we have a servo. So let's configure those now. So you click into motors. And now each one of these represents one of the physical wiring ports on your robot. So if you look at the chart that's on our uh, website, um, you'll see that in, in type motor port zero, um, there's an ultraplanetary and it's called left drive. So you grab down this list and you scroll through this list for all the different types of legal motors for FTC, click Rev Robotics Ultraplanetary, and then you'll type left drive. And you'll notice I, I made a typo there, but I'm going to make sure that I do that right. So left drive. And I click good. So now in the second motor, I also have an ultraplanetary. And then the name for that one is right drive. Okay. Now the third, the, the motor that's in port number two, um, this is a Rev Core Hex motor, and that one is ARM. Um, so that's done. And then the last motor that we have on this robot is another Core Hex motor, and that Core Hex motor is your intake. All right. So you've got all the all the names and labels in your in your motors, so you can click done. Now we also have on this robot a servo. And so that servo is for um, spinning the duck. So you go to servos and it's in servo port 0. So you just select servo and in this case we named it duck spinner. And so you select done there. All right. Now the last thing on this configuration file is the IMU. The IMU is the sensor inside the robot. This is actually already configured. It's automatically configured on all devices because that sensor is built into the control hub. But it's good to enter and verify that everything is named correctly. In this case, it is. So I'm going to click done. Um, I have all, everything configured. So I also click done. You click done again. Uh, and now you click save. Now name this configuration file. So you can name this starter bot. All right. And click done and save. So now in your configurations, uh, you've got all of these things. Um, one of the other important things to realize is that you can have multiple configurations on your robot. So you need to make sure that you have the right one activated. So that's like the active file. So um, when you create the first one, it automatically activates it, but always to make sure, click that activate button, and then in the top corner, top right corner of the screen, it should show you which one is active. So in this case, you're now done. And then the robot itself will say restarting, but you'll have an active, you'll have an active configuration, right? And you can see that right here in this screen here above the above the down arrow it says starter bot that's how you know you've got the right configuration 
Um, so that's all that it takes in terms of the actual configuration of the robot getting this preset. Now it's time to go and to transfer the code that you downloaded from your computer to the control hub itself. So going back to your computer, um, with uh, your control hub still turned on, you go over to your network settings and you'll actually connect to your control hub. You'll see that I'm already connected here. Um, so this, is, this will show you no internet secured on a Windows machine. It'll look a little different on a Mac, but you want to connect wirelessly from your computer to your control hub, right? And now this is where there's two options. So option number one, which will work for regardless of what type of device you're, you're working with, Apple, Chromebook, Windows, you would go to um, your web browser and type in 192.168.43. One colon eighty eighty, um, just that's up here. We can post that in the description of the video, and that's also in our documentation. Um, and that will load this page. Um, and so you'll notice a couple things up at top. So this is where you've got information about your your ver robot controller versions, all the firmware, the passwords. That's all there. But what we're going to do here is we're going to go to blocks. So this is the Blocks programming interface. And uh, so you'll notice there's nothing here because there's no code that's been written. But you can click this button here in the middle called Upload Op Mode. And that'll prompt you to upload a file. So you'll choose File. And then you can grab the file that we downloaded earlier. Click Open and then OK. And now that will transfer that file wirelessly from your computer to the control hub. You'll notice now you've got a whole bunch of stuff over here in the programming window. Um, and this is the code required to run your robot using just the regular gamepad. So now you're done with your computer. All the code is there. Um, and so now you are ready to, uh, ready to run. So if you uh, go back to your driver hub, you'll notice that now underneath that arrow, it says 2021 starter blocks. So if you click that, you can click init and go, uh, you'd be ready to drive your robot. So in this case, this software and this configuration is really set up for the very, very specific model of everything set up the way that we did it. So if you followed the instructions um, where motors are plugged into the right ports and configuration files are, are named properly, this should work for you. If you are running into any problems, it's likely the configuration uh, file has a naming issue or something is maybe wired. Um, you can go back and check out those steps again. Um, if you've got any questions, um, please make sure to check out the docs.revrobotics.com uh, site. We've got a lot of information there, not just on how to do this process of moving code, but also how to learn a little bit more about blocks programming or other programming. There's some other great resources online that first is shared. Um, and I think that um, this is really designed as a way to get you started as a primer. Uh, but this is just the beginning of your uh, robotics and programming experience. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at the competition. Thanks a lot.